Hallelujah in this house. Come on, put those hands together and give God some praise in this place. Come on, that's a great place to just lift up your hand and send up some worship. Anybody know we serve the King of glory? Can you send some glory up his way? Can you just open your mouth and tell him how much you love him? Come on, take that moment. Just tell him how much you love him. Doesn't matter what the world says, but they're going to say they love him too. There's coming a day where the world, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that God is Lord. There's no one above him, no one beneath him. He is Alpha and Omega, beginning and if you believe that, can you just lift up your hand and begin to send up some worship? I know you got your mask on, but you ought to just let your mind roll back over the times God had to show himself as God to you. How big is he to you? Can you just call him King of Glory this morning? Yeah. Yes, the one. Bow down and say you are God. And every man will bow down and say you are King. So let's start right. just want to be with you. Come on, everybody say, yeah. King of glory, yeah. Just want to be with you. Yeah, just want to be with you. Yeah, yes to her, yes to her. With back.
Jesus, you're the King of glory. Please fill this place. I want to be with you. Can we have some old church for a minute? Stay right there, Scotty. Yeah, it had not been for Somebody tell me where. where Come on, we got one more time and we got to go. Oh, if it had not, not come on, say it had not been for. Into the marvelous light. 
save the wretch undone. Somebody shout yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woo! The old folk used to say, it's another day's journey. And I'm glad about it. If that's your testimony, you ought to lift those hands and tell God, thank you. Thank you. Glory, glory. I know you can't touch your neighbor, but look that way and say, mighty God, mighty God. Mighty God. Mountains move at his command. All power woo, is in his mighty hand. Watch this. He never falls short of his word. But look, when I need a friend, somebody shout, Jesus will step right in. Oh, yes. Because the mighty God Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. But I want to hear you. I want to hear you. Open your mouth. What does it sound like when the Lord bless you in a pandemic? I see folk got promotions in a pandemic. Raises in a pandemic. House in a pandemic car in a pandemic. Watch this. Healing in a pandemic. Lift those hands and tell God, thank you. Jesus. <laughs> Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Somebody bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Woo! Woo! God, hallelujah. Hey, 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 hey. I feel God in this place. Anybody feel God in this place? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Let it out. You've been waiting for this moment. Use it wisely. We praise God and we thank him for Oh, I feel God in here. We thank him for every blessing. Thank God for, you might have lost an hour of sleep, but the Lord blessed you with a brand new day. Come on here. I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God. All praises to, again, our Heavenly Father and, and to my brother and sister. When I say that, I mean that. It's not casual, it's just the truth. My brother, Bishop Kevin Willis, who is not with us today, but he is resting very well and doing fine. Amen. I saw it with my own eyes. <laughs> And to my dear beloved sister, my God, Pastor Linda Willis, what a woman of God, my true sister, amen. Thank God for her. To my nephew, KJ, one of the most gifted singers that the Lord ever put on this planet. And to my wonderful niece, 
Kelly, we thank God for this wonderful family. Come on, y'all. And to you, my, and I can, I'm one pastor that can stand here and say this, to you, my new life family. I brag on the fact that on the very first service, I was the first person to join the church. This is my membership church. This is my bishop and my pastor. Praise God. Last but not least, I'm so thankful to have with me and by my side every step of the way. And I know some folk might disagree with me with what I'm about to say, but she is the greatest wife that God had ever made. Amen. My wife, Deborah, here is here. I love her so much. Thank God for her. She's here with me. As always, she's always by my side. Second Kings. It is thick in here. Somebody shout thick. I need your help. Can y'all help me? I have a little voice problem, so I need your help. You be my voice. Amen. Second Kings 3. I'm reading from the NIV. But this is Second Kings 3, starting with verse 9. We'll, we'll jump around just a little. And when you have that, say amen. amen. To my new friendship family who is also watching, God bless you. I love you, Pastor loves you, and thank you for viewing with us on today. And it reads thusly, verse 9 says, if you have it, say amen. amen. So the king of Israel set out with the king of Judah and the king of Edom. After a roundabout march of seven days, watch this, the army had no water for themselves or for the animals with them. Verse 11 says, but Jehoshaphat asked, he, he asked, is there no prophet of the Lord here through whom we might inquire of the Lord? An officer of the king of Israel answered, Elisha, son of Shaphat, is here. He used to pour water on the hands of Elijah. Somebody say anointed. Verse 12 says, Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is within him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. Verse 14 says, Elisha said, as surely as the Lord Almighty lives, whom I serve, if I did not have respect for the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not pay any attention to you. <clears throat> but, <clears throat> but now, bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass, watch this, that when the minstrel played, and the hand of the Lord came upon him. And verse 16 says, and he said, thus saith the Lord. You've got to hear this. <clears throat> Make this valley full of ditches. Okay. Verse 17 says, for thus saith the Lord, ye shall not see wind, neither shall ye see rain. Yet that valley shall be filled. Y'all ain't saying what I thought you would. Shall be, they had no water. Shall be filled with water that ye may drink both ye and your cattle and your beast. I like verse 18. And this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver. Somebody shout also. He will deliver. Moabites also into your hands. With the time that I have, I want to talk about what to do in a dry place. <clears throat> what to do in a dry place. Every saint of God shout glory. Stay with me now. It's a it's, uh, it's a terrible condition to be in when you find yourself in a place where there seems to be no resources. And I'm not talking about the extravagancies or the 
luxuries of life, but I mean a place when, when what you need to survive is out of your reach. The place where there are bills to pay, but there's no money coming in. Somebody know what I'm talking about? place that when you when your problem is not what car to drive but instead do you even have transportation at all I'm talking about a place where you're not wondering what to eat but if you'll eat at all it's the place where the doctor gives you no sign of life no sign of hope it's the place where where you and your spouse put on a good show for the people but let the truth be known you're barely holding on by a three it's the place where on the outside, it looks like you got it all going on real good. But let the truth be known, a, 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 a depression has overtaken you and despair has taken the place of uh, expectation and you're walking around wearing a mask really deep inside. You're about to crumble and crush from the weight of what you're going through. Have I got some help in this place? And I wonder this morning, is there somebody here that knows what a wilderness looks like? Mm. How many here knows what a, what, a, what a wilderness feels like? It's, it's a place short of assets, but filled with misery. It is comparable to the situation we see in the text with, uh, where there are three kings joined forces together to defeat one army, one enemy, which, which already creates a problem because two of the three don't fully honor the will of God. It is only Jehoshaphat. The king that is a man who truly respects God. And as they join together, they find that, that all three kings and their armies end up in a wilderness. Are y'all with me? And, and, and they have journeyed now for seven days, and now uh, they are in a place where there is no water. There is only a drought in a desert. And can I begin by instructing you that one of the problems woo, that you find yourself in in dry places is because you're connected to dry people. <laughs> yeah, people, people that have nothing of substance to contribute to your relationship. People that seek you out to draw from you but give you nothing in return. People that use your gas and eat your food. People that wait until you get a place of your own, then ask if they can spend the night, and, sp and spending the night turns into three months. Dry people with no life or purpose of their own. Uh, 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 these, these other kings were bad influences. And sometimes the biggest problem we have is our friendship circle. I'll say it again and you'll do better. Sometimes the biggest problem we have is the, are those that are connected to us in a circle that we call friends. And how many understand that you need to redefine your friendship circle and eliminate all the whiners and the complainers, sift out all the doubters and the powders, have a deliverance service and deliver yourself from people with no vision, no passion, y'all ain't saying nothing, who spend all of their time wallowing in self-pity. And how many here know that the wrong associations will kill you? Yeah, they will kill your joy. They will kill your vision. They will kill your passion. And how many will lift a hand when I say they will kill your faith? In the text, if it hadn't been for King Jehoshaphat, who knew the power of a word from God, woo, they, they would have all died right there in the wilderness. Yeah, it, it was he who asked, is there not a prophet here that we might inquire of the Lord? You, you see, folk who are dry, whoo, folk that have no life, are folk that don't know for themselves that God is the answer to every situation. I want you to look at your neighbor and tell them God is the answer. I want you to look on the screen. I want somebody to type it that God is the answer. If you don't know that, don't do anything. But I'm talking to the folk that know that God is the answer. And I don't, I, look, if you don't mind, shout it to the rafters one more time for me. God is the answer. I hate to bust your bubble. It's not your friends. How are you going to listen to folk that don't know any more than you know? But God is the answer. 
And how many know if you want answers, you've got to talk to God? Have I got a witness in here? Have I got some folk that have conversations with God? In my, in my much younger days, I, I, I had a habit of trying to learn other sports beside what black folk normally play, basketball and football. So I took up the, the, the sport of tennis. And when I began playing tennis, uh, I, I spent some time with an instructor. Uh, he, he told me, he said, Paul, I'm going to hit some balls to you. I want you to hit them back to me the best you can. Hit some balls to me. I hit them back. They made it over the net. Hit them. He stopped me for a moment. He says, you got a, you got a power problem. I said, what do you mean I've got a power problem? The ball's getting over the net. He said, yeah, the ball's getting over the net, but it has no power. The ball's going over the net, but it has no pace. He said, and the reason why, somebody's going to help me right now. The reason why it doesn't have any power is because you're hitting the ball the wrong way. He says, you're using your upper body. He says, but the strength comes when you bend your knees. He said, if you want power to get the ball over the net and pass your opponent, you got to bend your knees. It's when you bend your knees, Paul, he says, and come through the ball, lifting yourself up, then power comes from the stroke. I wonder, is there anybody here understand the power of going down on your knees? Why well, my folk that's still old school, you just, don't, you just don't pray standing up. Sometimes you got to go down on your knees. Call on your father. Have I got some help in this place? Point to your knees and say, my power is in my knees. Philippians 4 and 6, he said, don't worry about anything. But pray and ask God for everything you need. Always. Somebody shout, Always giving thanks. They, they, they get to the prophet Elisha to receive a word from the Lord. The first thing he says uh, to him is, is, is get me a minstrel. Get me somebody that knows how to usher in the presence of God through praise. Get me somebody, I'm, I need some help that knows how to set the atmosphere. There is a need for praise and there is a song that needs to be sung. And the text shows that when the praise went forth, the Spirit of God, yeah, fell on Elisha. And when the Spirit fell, then the word came from the Lord. And in this dry season of your life, God sent me to tell you that you can't afford to lose your praise. In this pandemic that we're in, and you've been sitting in the house and watching stuff on TV like you're doing now. God says you cannot afford to lose your praise. How many know you got to praise God when you can't see your way out? Praise God when you can't see your way through. As a matter of fact, can I take just a few seconds and see the folk in here that know how to praise God? That is unconditional for you. All it takes is you got a memory and a mind and you know what God is able to do. I beg you right now to get up where you are. Forget about your neighbor. Maybe if you get up, they'll get up. But go ahead and give God a praise. Like you know what praise will do. Is there somebody in here that has praised your way through? Somebody shout yes. Somebody shout yes. I know what prayer will do. But I also know what praise will do. Somebody shout glory. One of my favorites, David said, I will bless the Lord Woo! at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. While you up, can I ask you a question? Is this one of those times that you ought to praise the Lord? Okay, y'all was with me a few minutes ago. I guess I lost you. I will bless the Lord at all times. My question is, is this one of those times 
do I have a witness? I don't care what you came in here with. I don't care what struggles you're going through. Is this one of the times? Sit down, y'all. God. So, for my note takers, what do you do in a dry place? Let's review. First thing, you got to examine who's in your circle. Hmm. Second thing. You got to praise God before your breakthrough. Here's my third point. Lastly, what you need to do, watch this, is trust God even when it doesn't make sense. I'll try it again. You'll holler better than you hollered then. I said, trust God when it doesn't make sense. Anybody ever paid tithe, gave your tithe, and you knew that if you gave your tithe, you wouldn't have any more money left, but because you know the power of God, you reached in your pocketbook and had enough. Anybody drove around your car for three days on just a little bit of gas, but you kept on going and kept trusting God, and you got everywhere you needed to go. Made it to work on time, and then somebody gave you some money for some gas. Can I finish? Here they are dying of thirst because there's no water, and the enemy is ahead of them. They go to the man of God, this great prophet Elisha, and the word he gives them is, watch this, go dig ditches. Dig ditches all over the valley. Now, now they are already dying of thirst. Just don't make sense. And to ask them to dig ditches through a valley uh, will only make them weaker than they already are. Here they are in the wilderness. Are y'all with me? A dry desert valley place, a low place, and in this place, this low dry desert place, the word of the Lord says dig ditches. I'm talking to somebody right now uh, who has been in that same place, that low, dry place where everything is hard, it's difficult. I'm talking to somebody in here, and it takes a great amount of effort. You have to force yourself to praise God. You have to force yourself to pray. You have to force yourself to read the Bible, force yourself to even go to virtual church. And it feels like you're so dry and empty and your mind is saying this is ridiculous and the devil is telling you it's not worth it. And how many know the devil is telling you it's over, it's dead, and it's never going to happen, but I got some saints out there. And saints, I found out that when you're in a dry place where there is no resource, sometimes you have to do some work to come out of what you're going through. Have I got a witness in this place? I know it's hard work. I know it's difficult. I know sometimes it doesn't make sense. I know sometimes you don't feel like it, but you got to keep digging. Look your neighbor's way and tell them keep digging. You, you may be in the greatest drought season of your life, and everything around you seems to be dried up, but the only way to get through it is to keep on moving. Keep on digging. That's my message. You better get with me. Keep on praying. Keep on praising. Keep on sowing. Keep on coming to church. And how many of you know you got to work your faith? I need some hollerers to holler for me. Work your faith. I know the devil meant to kill you. I know he meant to drive you out of the church. I know he meant to convince you that it was hopeless. I know it's been hard. I know it's been dry. And I know you felt like everybody was throwing you away. But the Lord sent me to tell you that all of this is just a setup. <clears throat>
Here's the word worth shouting about. God is getting ready to flip the script. Somebody do like this. And you're getting ready to see, uh, this is a word for you, you're getting ready to see the fruit of your labor. You're getting ready to see why you had to cry at night. You're getting ready to see why you had to get down to almost nothing. You're getting ready to see why they took your job away and you were doing a good job. You, you're getting ready to see why you had to be healed and delivered from your illness. And the Lord turned around and gave you a testimony. Hmm. Be not weary in well-doing. Wave your hand when I say this, but in due season. <laughs> You shall reap a harvest. I'll try it again. You'll do better this time. I said in due season. You shall reap a harvest. In due season. You shall reap a harvest. If you faint not. I'm almost done. God tells me to tell this uh, to you. That there is somebody in this place right now. And God says, for those that will, 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 will receive that, that God says that this is your due season. I know it doesn't feel like it. I know it doesn't look like it. You, you, you wonder how God's going to do it. But for everyone that will praise him right now, God says, this is your due season. I saw a lady stand up in the back. I feel you in the spirit. I see another lady standing in the back. People are standing up and receiving what I just said. How many will receive it that this is your due season? Maybe I'm talking to some folk that want to stay where you are and stay what you're in. But for those that's ready to come up out of what you're going through, God says, if you praise me right now. This is your due season. Keep standing. I decree the name of Jesus to somebody here that finds himself in a spiritual drought. That your season is about to change. I came to prophesy to you that your drought is breaking. And it's going to break in the same place, the very same place where the enemy said it was over. In other words, God's getting ready to bring you out in front of the enemy that told you that it was over. In the same place where the enemy said, I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to mess up your marriage. I'm going to mess up your worship. I'm going to destroy your family destroy your health and your finance it is in that same place where the devil says it's going to end and you're going to dry up and die but God says get ready to tap into my glory Woo! where my tappers at God says get ready to tap into my glory Woo! point your neighbor's way and say it's almost over it's almost over I don't know about you, but I feel a shift in the atmosphere concerning you. Somebody shout yes. Tell your neighbor for me that your blessing, your miracle, your breakthrough is about to come through. Now shout glory in this house. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Stay with me. Sit down for just a minute. I'm almost done. It's almost over. <laughs> I like it when you respond. I'll try it again. It's almost over. There are some people looking back at me and even on the screen right now that's looking back at me that needs to hear that it's almost over. That means you got something that you're going through that's been burdening burdening you and you've got trouble and you've got situations God said it's almost over give me just a few more minutes and I'll be done prophet Elisha tells them not only to dig ditches <laughs> but he tells them in verse 17 look, listen to what he says verse 17 Here's what will happen. You won't hear the wind. You won't even see the rain. But this valley that you're in, this dry place, I like it when you respond to God's word, is going to fill up with water.
Can I, can I tell somebody here today that while you're digging your way out, God's about to bring a season of abundance and overflow to your life. And listen, and it's going to come out of nowhere. Woo! I don't know how God's going to do it. He didn't give me that. I don't know when God's going to do it. I don't know what method God's going to use. Oh, but I do know that it's going to happen for you. Somebody shout glory. Point to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you won't hear it coming. You won't see it coming. But nod your head and say, but it's coming. I wish you would at home right now. Nod your head and say, it's coming. Somebody scream, it's coming. I want you to hear this. God sends the word to dig ditches all over the valley to catch and contain water. I'm about to send you. No wonder the devil has fought you so hard. No wonder he tried to kill you in the wilderness. Mm. The devil knew if you ever got to the water, he wouldn't stand a chance. The devil knew that if you ever caught a glimpse of the fruit of your labor, that his mission is over. He thought, somebody shout, he thought. That you just fold up your arms and you would quit. Somebody shout, he thought. You would just throw in the towel and give up. Somebody shout, he thought. That you would fall apart. Somebody shout, he thought. Uh, that you'd have a nervous breakdown. Somebody shout, he thought. You would get angry and bitter and resentful and critical. Somebody shout, he thought. You would just sit down and cry. But he never counted on you to start digging ditches. Woo! But he didn't realize that all you needed, watch hands go up, was a word from the Lord. Point to yourself and say, oh, that's all I need. is a word from God. Speak it in the atmosphere. I've got a word. I got a word that said my season is changing. Word that blessings are on the way. Word that is about to get better in my life. Word that weeping may endure. Watch this for a night. Woo! But joy is coming in the morning. Somebody wave your hand and say, I can't wait till tomorrow. Well, when is God going to bless you? Tomorrow. Somebody shout yes. But pastor, how do I dig ditches now? Tools do I use to dig ditches now? Well, God says, you don't have to dig ditches today with a shovel or even a bulldozer. Watch my praises. God says that one more shot. If you can get strength enough to get one more hallelujah out. One more thank you, Jesus. One more running across the floor. One more dance. Yeah, we'll dig your ditch. How do you know? Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Be careful for nothing, but in everything prayer, by prayer and supplication. Watch this with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God in the peace of God. Here it is. You don't know where it's coming from, which past all understanding will keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. So I dare you to start praising God like it's already done. I'm about through. I dare you to praise God like it's already done, I said. Praise God like the checks in the mail. Watch this. And I ain't talking about the stimulus check. I'm talking about the other check.
Watch this. Praise God for your next doctor's visit. Not if, but when he tells you what I thought I saw, I don't even see. Watch this. For the next person that praises God, God says promotion is tied to you. Anybody here can stand a promotion. And for those that's not ashamed to lift up your purse and open it wide. For those that will get their wallets and open the part where the money comes in. God says get ready for it to be filled. Like it ain't never been filled before. Somebody shout yes. Somebody, I said I can hear. Shout yes. You shout with your fingers. So type it out. Yes, God. Let me tell you the end of the story and I'll be through. The record is that they dug ditches. All day, they dug ditches. Isn't it amazing that God gave them the strength to dig ditches with no water? Uh, then they went to sleep that night. Y'all missed it. When you trust God for something, you do what he says, don't worry about it. Go home and go to bed. Now watch my help. But in the morning, when they got up out of their beds, every ditch was filled with water. Watch this. Every ditch was filled with water, but it didn't rain in the valley. See, what happened was that God sent a flood in the mountains that saturated the ground in the valley and then it filled up the ditches from underneath. <laughs> Somebody shout out of nowhere. God says I'm going to give you the water. I'm going to quench your thirst. I'm going to meet your need. I'm going to deliver you. But watch this. That's just the beginning. 2 Kings 3 and 18, and I'm done. And this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver the Moabites also into your hands. Here it is. God said that there is also scheduled for your life. There is an also scheduled for your life. Yeah, I hear about the drought. I hear that there is no water. God says, but also I'm going to deliver the Moabites into your hand. Uh, I wonder if there's somebody that can use an also blessing. It's called the blessing after the blessing. That's why I had you hold up your purse and hold up your wallet and tell you that there's some money coming that you cannot or that you did not expect. God said that very thing, and I'm done, that you've been chasing will begin to chase you. Miracles will begin to chase you. Healing is going to chase you. Money and wealth is going to chase you. Peace of mind. Peace of mind. Peace of mind. Hold your head and shout, peace of mind. Peace of mind is going to chase you. You're about to be what God says you are. What's that, Pastor? The head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. It's your turn to be first and not last. So I want you to do this. I want you to go ahead and, and encourage yourself. I'm done. Tell yourself, hang in there. Keep digging. Because your season is about to change. I was driving down the street in the fall of the year. And as I was driving down the street in the fall of the year, 
I saw leaves falling from the trees. And they began to gather on the streets and in people's yards. Fall is the indication, the falling of the leaves is the indication that the season was changing. Fall was coming. Somebody shout, fall was coming. God tells me to tell you that what's been out of your reach is about to fall at your feet. Just like the text, I'm done. You're going to wake up one morning and look around. Somebody shout, it's coming. Wake up one morning. In the place that you dug in faith, every prayer, every request, oh, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Every desire, every decree will be filled. You won't hear it coming. <laughs> won't see it coming. But God says, in the morning, your blessing is going to show up. Somebody bless him right now and believe. Somebody bless him and believe. I, I can't see you at home, but I feel you. And I want you to go with them, those that believe that that message was for you. Point to yourself in this building, but those that's watching me, type it out right now. That's for me, Pastor. I was down, but I feel myself on the way back up. Anybody feel your help coming? God tells me to tell you this. I preached at many church, and, and sometimes the Lord will give me what, 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 what I call a one-word blessing for the place that God has me to preach in. And God tells me to tell you for those that will praise God after I give you this one word, this one single word, that your praise will activate what he's about to do. This is not for the casual saint. This is for the believer that understands that when the Lord sends a man or one with your, uh, uh, your way with the word of God, that it's a real thing. And I have a one word. Who's ready to receive this one word? And I hope you, I hope you will, will give God all you have when I give you this word. I already gave it to you, but I, I wondered if you heard it. God says that the one word for you that's at home, and, and, and remember, it's, it's activated by your praise. God says that the one word that's over this house right now is fall. Everything you desire. Everything you've been looking for, everything you've been hoping for, is about to fall at your feet. Money coming and about to fall in your hand. Enemy is about to fall away. God says, if you dig, one more time, give me that dig. I told you, you dig with your praise. But if you can holler one more time, have you got strength enough? I know you're tired. I know you're weak, but let it fall. How many feel it falling? How many believe it's falling? Wave your hand and shout, it is so. In the name of Jesus Christ. here and bless him is there anybody here that loves the Lord that don't mind praising him come on get it out of your system get it out of your belly give God a praise now do this it's falling it's falling it's falling it's I don't know how God's going to do. 
but our decree is done. Come on, somebody's receiving that right now. Come on, it's called a prophetic praise. Come on, you don't see no rain, you don't see no wind. But prophetically, you're going to praise God because your ditch is filled. Come on, prophesy out of your own mouth, over your own life, over your own marriage, over your own job. Come on, say it's falling now. And my ditch is about to be filled. Hey, God. Hallelujah, been here. It's a prophetic atmosphere. It don't seem like it makes sense to the world. But to the new life believer, we believe that we have the power to speak it and see it show up. We believe that we have the authority to speak a thing and see it come into existence. Now open your mouth again and say, it's falling. My ditch is about to be filled. What I've been needing from the Lord is about to be in my ditch. I don't hear y'all saying nothing. What I've been praying for is about to show up. Show up. Hey, show up. I don't know about y'all, but I received that word. Hallelujah. I believe it's coming this week. I'm just speaking over my own life. <laughs> y'all gonna have to get it for yourself, but I believe it's gonna show up this week. God. I'm just speaking over my own life. KJ, you got to speak over your life. Hallelujah. Read a and speak over your own life.
just keep playing that music. Listen, you know what the Lord told me, just spoke into my spirit? He said, the evidence that you have that I'm gonna do just what I said is that, is that it was this time last year when the whole world was shutting down and they said we were in the midst of a pandemic and God said, if I did it, I don't hear nobody praising God. If I kept you through the pandemic, look at somebody and tell them I could have been dead. I could still be on a ventilator. But for 12 months, the Lord has been keeping me, blessing me healing me delivering me now put those glad hands together and bless God in this place things could have happened to you in these last 12 months that could have taken you out pastor Paul preached he said this is just a light thing I got some greater things I'm gonna do for you don't you count God out he did all of that here we are a year later. We live to tell a story, y'all. Some folk didn't make it, but we're still here. We live to tell about it. I said, that's the evidence. Yes, it is. I'm not through with your life. That's the evidence. And whatever I say, that's what I will do. And if you could see me do all of that, said the Lord. Can't you believe? Come on, that I'll fill your ditches. Can't you believe that I'll turn some things around for you? I know you don't see it. You don't see no rain. You don't see no wind. <laughs> said, but I'm going to fill the ditches. 
Some of y'all looking to see some. That's the power of God. That God does things supernaturally. Thank you, Jesus. I was sharing with Bishop some things that have happened just recently in my life that I, I prayed for, and I wrote them down in my journal. Just a few months ago, I asked God for some things, and I wrote them down in my journal. And Pastor Paul, I closed the book. I closed the journal. And I didn't, Natasha, worry God with it anymore. Because, see, I believed him when I wrote it down. And those things have come to pass in this last week or two in my life. And Bishop was teasing with me. He said, you know, God, God just show sure love you. I said, he does. <laughs> he loves y'all too. I said, but not only does God love me, I trust God. So when I closed the book, I closed my journal. I, I, I closed it saying, it's done. Now, I didn't know how it was going to happen. But I, I believe that when I asked him, because that's what he said. He said he would give me the desires of my heart. And all I did was receive it. I'm saying this to you because this is such a powerful word this morning that has gone forth. Can y'all celebrate Pastor Paul Reed?